Howdy. This is Levy with RevZilla. And I'm Spurge, and we are here today to discuss the best motorcycle helmets of 2019. That's entirely true. We're showing you what is best for this year, the upcoming riding season. Now, in some segments, there was a clear winner. Others, man, it was a really dogged fight out there. But instead of chattering on about it, let's get right into stuff. Spurge, what do you got? So this is going to be the best motorcycle helmet sub $200, and that award is going to go to the AGV K1. And the reason this helmet is going to get our best sub $200 award is the styling mixed with the safety on this, but really it's the styling that takes us home and sets it apart from other helmets out there in this range. You've got this really aggressive hawk spill, you've got the spoiler on the back, you get all this MotoGP style, but for a helmet that's coming in at a very affordable price point, and the other big thing is that AGV has changed the fit for their helmets with this. It's now more of an intermediate oval, which is going to be more comfortable and usable for the majority of the American riders out there. Absolutely. They really nailed the styling on this thing. I mean, this looks exactly like the piece that you be, which but is, it's not sixteen hundred bucks, ex right? <laughs> exactly. Now I'll be one hundred percent honest. If I was shopping for a helmet myself and I was down in this price range, I would probably be. Uh minimizing, I guess, how much I was looking for style. I think you could probably pick up another helmet that maybe offers the exact same features as this, if not maybe even a little bit better, but forego some of the styling, but still keep a couple bucks in your pocket. Probably important for people shopping for helmets in this price range. Yeah, man, and I agree with you. I think for anyone out there looking to buy a sub $200 helmet, there's a ton of great options, but really what sets the K1 apart is that style. For So for people that do find style important, they want that really racy look, they now have an option to select from. And the other thing is, too, if you want to go a little bit above that $200 mark, you can get into some of the really cool AGV race graphics that are normally reserved for those $1,600 pistas. Yeah, and style is definitely important, which actually carries us nicely into our next helmet. That's going to be the best bang for the buck helmet. And this year, that's going to Icon. Oh, cool with the Air Flight. This thing is actually a really neat helmet. So obviously we've got some pretty in your face styling here, <laughs> much like that helmet, but instead of appealing to the track set, this is looking real bad on your bike, you know, sort of trying yeah. to scare the hell out of the neighbors sort of yes. thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> now for all the in your face styling here, this is actually a remarkably usable helmet, which I feel like Icon has done a really good job with in all their gear lately. Yeah. Um, when I say usable, I mean, okay, so you've got obviously this drop down shield that comes right over the chin. But that but, shield looks awesome too, if you get it in that mirror. Oh, that you can't, you can't see anything? It yeah. looks crazy. It looks ridiculous. Some of the color combos you can oh, set yeah. up are really, really nuts. But if you have a gloved hand, opening this thing up is absolutely cake. You can see these huge chimney vents up here. These are really easy to open with a gloved hand. I mean, this thing, for as wild as it looks, yeah. is actually a very pragmatic helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's interesting because for me, I would have never considered Icon personally. But they introduced the Airframe Pro, and with that, they really stepped up, in my mind, their quality level. I mean, I've used the Airframe Pro on the track. It's really my go-to street track helmet. And I think for folks looking for that same quality, but for a street only helmet, the Air Flight really carries on that tradition. That being said, I am not about to give up my Airframe Pro in that cool Warbird graphic that I got from the Ninja 400 review. I think that I, that makes a bunch of sense. And Spurgeon also too, he likes the crazy graphics as well. I think, don't you have a pleasure dome sitting on your desk? I do have a pleasure dome sitting on my desk. Yeah, and with that, we're gonna do. move right along to the next category, which is actually gonna be the best adventure helmet for 2019. And that's gonna go to the AGV AX9. Now the reason this is gonna get our top pick for Adventure Lid for 2019 is you got a lot of improvements on a helmet that's been a perennial favorite since 2011. So really what you're gonna see here is an Adventure helmet has to do well on-road and off-road. And what AGV did is they made it better for both. So the peak that you're gonna have on this now has reduced lift. So if you're riding on the street to your favorite Starbucks, you're not gonna have to worry about the helmet pulling up on you as much. And you're gonna have increased ventilation and functionality in this little face shield down the front I gotta grab that tab right there. Oh, so neat. yeah, if you're riding off road, you can pull the little blocker out, get a mass amount of airflow here and really turn it more into a true dirt helmet. So it speaks more to that duality, which is an adventure lid. Oh, the duality. The duality. So, so existential, Spurge. <laughs> so walk me through this a little bit because I'm a little bit out of my depth here with ADV. That's obviously your home. You know, I generally consider two helmets. I have my street lid and I have my dirt lid and and never the two shall meet. So, so why why an adventure lid? Yeah, like, so I, I'm, I'm with you. The majority time I would pick either dirt or street but about two years ago I took a trip down to Baja and I only took a dirt helmet with me and I really thought well this is gonna be fine yeah. and I ended up spending about 600 miles flying down the highway at 85 miles an hour <laughs> and it killed me I mean I was getting all the wind burn on my face and like the buffeting was a like, kill on my neck so I really kind of revisited what helmet I was going to use for those style trips and with an adventure helmet what I found is that I still get all the functionality of a dirt lid I can still use goggles with this maximize ventilation but when I 
I'm riding along on the highway, uh, right, the peak like doesn't just head fall backwards. off of my head. So I think for folks out there that do want to split the difference a little bit, you know, these helmets really work well. And I think for 2019, if you're looking at adventure helmets, the AGV is going to be one that you have to consider. Fair enough. In that context, I guess I, I can really appreciate an adventure lid. Uh, that having been said, I'm probably just going to stick with two helmets, street and dirt. And I'm with you 90% of the time, too. And if you like dirt helmets, you'll actually really appreciate the next one, which is our best newcomer for 2019. And the newcomer award is going to go to Alpine Stars because not only has Alpine Stars introduced a really great helmet to the market, they've never had a helmet before. So this is the first time they brought a helmet to market. And with the new SM10, this is going to be a premium dirt lid that's really going to go toe to toe with some of the premium competition that we already see out there on the market. They killed it on this thing. I mean, full carbon shell. The interior gets a MIPS 2 liner. And if you remember, the MIPS is that low speed yep, rotational, rotational impact, impact protection. Yep. But now it's got the newest level of MIPS. And that liner has these little adjustable points on the inside. So you can actually move the helmet forward or back on your head, depending on how you like the helmet to sit. The whole package comes in at like three pounds. I mean, it's just a killer helmet it's in crazy, general. I mean, feel it. Crazy light. Yeah, crazy light. Alpine Stars really came out swinging here. For a first attempt, you really couldn't ask for them to do any better. Yeah. The one thing I'm kind of wondering, to be 100% honest with you, is it, we're going to see this helmet or another Alpine Stars helmet in the 2020 gear guides, simply because competition in the dirt helmet segment is so fierce right mm -hmm. now. I mean, you got Bell, there are people, I mean, there's just some incredible oh, yeah. helmets on the market right now. This technology has advanced really, really quickly as of late, I feel like. So speaking anecdotally, I just got back from using this helmet on the Scrambler 1200 launch yeah. out in Portugal. And this year, my two main helmets have been the new F5 Coroid from Climb yep. and the Shoei VFX Evo. So two top line, brand new premium helmets, 2019. And I this think goes this to one to goes toe to toe yep. with both of those lids. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this plays out and what other riders like yourself out there think of this going into the new year. Yeah, thanks, Killer. Okay, it's time. Numero uno. Best in show, baby. Oh man, what do we got? The best helmet of 2019 Woo! is going to Shoei for the Neo Tech 2. The 2. This is their flagship modular helmet, and this this helmet's Cadillac. Yeah. It's it's killer. <laughs> we, uh, just looking at the outside of this thing, we got a pin lock ready shield on here. You can see obviously we've got a drop down visor inside this lid. Flip it over. We've got a ratcheting stainless chin strap on here, and of course an intermediate oval shape, which means it's going to fit a bunch of heads. I mean, just the here fit in North and finish America. too is absolutely impeccable on the helmet. Killer. On you know, this thing. my only problem with this, and I'll be completely honest, is the fact that you know Shoei was really touting this new integrated comm system from Cena. Yeah. And I didn't like it. I had a hard time getting it to install. It was just a pain in the butt, and I ended up just going back to using my 20S. So let me let me give you a little bit of information here. Drop it on me, okay, boy. So the reason Shoei worked with Cena on that comm system was not for ease of installation. I thought the same thing. I thought, okay. oh, they're trying to make something that's integrated, it's easy to install. No, yeah. it's not. You're right. It is a little bit finicky to install that thing, but there's a reason for it. And your scenario is actually exactly indicative of what they were trying to avoid. When you put a comm system on the outside of your helmet, boop, you got this big bubble hanging off right, right now. If you'll notice here, this thing's more or less smooth. So the reason they worked with them is to make sure that they keep the exterior of this helmet nice and smooth because they're trying to make it quiet. We've heard people complain gotcha. about modular helmets being noisy, yeah, of course, yeah. and it's not just there that they kind of put the research in. If you look at the face shield itself here, you'll notice all these cool contours, and it sort of eases the transition that the air has to actually follow as it comes off the face yep. shield into the helmet itself. They even went so far, flipped this thing over, they made extra wide chin straps on here specifically to help seal out some of the air and wind noise that can come into a modular helmet especially. And super comfortable. Yeah, I mean, those feel, the extra chin are nice. very nice on nice. the skin. <laughs> no, I will say this. So when you look at a modular helmet in general, like a lot of times you do get that complaint of, you know, it's, it's very noisy. And I totally. think Shoei really set out to make a helmet that's not just quiet for a modular, but just quiet, quiet in, in general. general. Yep. Um, the other thing you really failed to mention was that the best part of using a modular helmet is that with this open up, you can put it on your head and it doesn't mess up your hair. So whenever you're getting to where you're going, your hair's still oh, nice and suave. He would be interested <laughs> in that. So I'm not going to contest you on this, um, but I do want to throw a runner-up out there for our audience to consider, and that is going to be the F5 Coroid helmet from Climb. If you remember, I wrote an article for Common Tread. It is a new dirt helmet that we saw Climb kind of bring to market, and they introduced two new technologies with this helmet that bear mention, and that's the Coroid system, which looked like tiny little green straws yeah, for the a, liner. Yeah, it's a series of tubes. That's all it is, but it maximizes ventilation to a point where it's probably one of the best venting helmets I've ever used. And the other thing was a 
put a little Fidlock system on the closure for the chain Dude, strap. Fidlock systems are like showing up everywhere yeah. in motorcycle gear and apparel and stuff. It's it's killer. But it's it works, so easy But it works to use. well here because picture your hand caked in mud. You're out there in the dirt, and all you have to do is reach up and, and pull this down, and it, it recloses. It works phenomenally. So if Climb can introduce you know that technology to a street helmet, I think we're going to see a Climb helmet sitting up here for 2020. That'd be killer. In fairness, though, I mean that's a fairly specific scenario. Yep. I think for most people, though, the Neotech 2 is just. I mean, it's just going to serve. And so that many is more why riders. it is our top pick for 2019 for the best helmet, and that is going to wrap out our video, giving you the best helmets that you should be looking at this coming year. That's true. Make sure you cruise over to RevZilla.com. We've got plenty of videos, articles on these, lots of resources. Check out some expert opinions so you can figure out the very best of a couple of different product categories. And you always want to make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, especially because we're going to have our new rider type guides rolling out. And it's going to walk you through the best gear for your style of riding, regardless of what you ride. Yeah, the rider type guides are kind of nice simply because it'll kind of get you educated on what's out there and sort of what breadth of products exist for you. We do want to thank you for joining us for this best look at the helmets of 2019. I'm Spurge. I'm Lem. We're out of here. Enjoy the ride.